Like, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I make it to the five o'clock sharp. Welcome, everyone. Hi. Um, first up, uh, guess. I guess. Okay. Um, we have one guest. Eli. Good morning in progress. Would you, would you introduce yourself, please? I'm Eli Tui, and I'm with the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. I'm yes, Eli we're going to hear from you. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, with that, uh, we need to approve the minutes of the November 7th, 2023 regular select board meeting. Is there a motion? It's the weakest approval I've ever heard from you, Randy. <laughs> Is there, a, is there a second? That sounded like a squeak. Have you had a long day? I have. Very, very long <laughs> I'll day. I'll second it. Okay, thank Even you. Even though I didn't hear it. All right. It's I'll to approve up. the minutes. <laughs> yes. So do we have a quorum of those now? Yeah. We do, right? And can okay, you so we'll do the, who was there for that one. Well, I'm not going to be able to vote on the seventh, so let's. Right, do it you separately. can't vote on the seventh, so let's okay. let's vote on the seventh. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor of the motion to approve the minutes for November seventh, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? We have approved the minutes of the seventh. Thank you. Uh, motion to approve the minutes of October seventeenth. Has to be either Vic. Liz, I'll move this. Peter. I'll move that one for the October 17th. And is there a second? Okay, good. Um, okay, we need to vote. All those in favor of approving the minutes of October 17th, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No, we've done it. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. That was the 17th, so okay, that one I can one. sign that one. Yeah, we're going to get a pen from um, Yeah. Uh, reviewing and amending and approving the agenda for uh, November 21st today. I'll move. Uh, okay. Is there a second? Okay. Thank you, Victor. It's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda today. I have one. Uh, I'm sorry, I have one quick amendment, which is just an update on uh, on Welch Park that I'll do under other business. Um, is that acceptable to the people? Acceptable to you, Liz? And uh, yep. Victor? Okay. Yes, of course. So uh, the motion is to approve the amended uh, agenda for tonight's meeting. All those in favor? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm sorry. So we made that motion, right? Yes, yes. we did. Who made that motion? Liz uh, made the I motion and yep. Victor seconded it. Okay, thank you. Sure. Is her signed. Did you guys want to nominate me for the Oh, we also have another amendment here. I didn't read down far enough. I'm sorry. So we'll do that as a second. Do uh, you want to do that now, Sarah? Might as well, right? Approving Brian Montgomery's application for FEMA buyout. Yep, and we also have to approve an amendment to the Vermont grants and A's. Nothing, it's not, no big deal. Okay. No big deal. Is that right here? No. Yeah, it's, a, it's on the, agenda, the amended agenda. Is oh, there it's any... already on the amended agenda. Yeah. Okay, so we're good. Okay. Okay. Wait, but should Ellie? I move? No, 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 no. No, we voted, didn't we? Well, no, we have to move. We have to approve Brian Montgomery's application. Oh yes, 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 yes. I'll move that we approve it. Okay. Is there a second? I will do that. Wait, you guys are jumping right to the brewing. Okay. We're going to moved the FEMA by Liz, but seconded by Victor. Okay. Is there anything to know about this, Sarah? Of any interest? No, I don't. How many does that make on this on this road or the, in in the town? Probably the 16th. Oh, wow. Wow. So that was Liz and Vic. Yeah. Yep. 
Okay. okay, all those in favor of approving Brian Montgomery's application for FEMA buyout, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Peter, could you sign the pertinent parts there that, that have the sticky notes on them? Just I will them. sign everything. Okay, thank you. At some point in time here, I got all kinds of stuff. Um, okay. And we might as well go ahead and do this uh, amendment to the Vermont Grants and Aid. Can you tell us what that is, please? Yes, it's pretty standard. It's a Vermont. Um, it's a grant, it's a highway grant we got last year, October 22nd, for uh, uh, for $22,000, and uh, you just need to amend it so that um, is, it's, it's, it's really just going to work. It's just says, the grant and more details hereby deleted and replaced in its entirety with a revised part one retail pack attached, and it's on the other side of that. And there's nothing that I can see that's changed except it's moved the due date. So the, due, the grant was originally from 2022, it was due 2020, to be completed in 2023, now it will be able to be completed in 2023. So it's extending the date? Yes, yeah. yeah, so they extended the date because of the, the okay. big okay. to do this summer, the flooding. Okay. So do we have a motion on that item? Uh, Amendment to the Vermont Grants and Aid. No. Moved by Randy. I'll second. So I'll second it. I'll second. Thank you, Victor. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we've done that. And you guys sign that too, okay, Peter? Okay, I've got paperwork in front of me here like you wouldn't believe, but I will right. carefully go through it. Ellie. Eli. Right. Welcome. Eli, hi. Um, all right, so. Why don't you. Uh, well, you sit right here. Sit over cool. here so the owl will see you. All right. I don't want to tell you what to do with this. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. So, I'm here to share a little bit about the Municipal Technical Assistance Program. Um, and I sent out a couple of examples of what we've done with some of the towns. Um, this is a program that's run out of the Office of um, the Agency of Administration. And so uh, regional planning commissions um, are there to kind of help towns, municipalities with different projects that they prioritize. And we're there to help with applications, um, oh. administration of those grants, um, if uh, towns were to get those uh, different grants that we might apply for. Um, and so there's a little process that we go through. There is a um, there's eligible projects, so those are listed on that form that I sent out to everybody. Water and wastewater infrastructure, housing, community recovery, workforce development, business support, um, climate change mitigation, and resilience projects. And then there's this other... ...tightly in those other categories, but we can run by the... Um, agency of administration and they may or may not approve for us to move forward with municipal technical assistance on those projects. Um, so kind of our first step is to, you know, check in with the town if yes, you know, the town says yes, you want to work, um, want us to work with you um, or not, you opt in or out. And then we go through a needs um, assessment and match that up with funding opportunities that are out there. And the reason this is coming to Middlesex now is there was a first round, there were four towns that were approved. They opened that up to more towns um, and Middlesex was in that bucket of towns and that was based on um, the flood impact. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. So community recovery could be town roads? Yes. Yeah. What were you saying community recovery? The community. Oh, I see. Yeah. Economic. Yeah. yeah. So that's the thing that jumps into my mind. I don't know if anybody else. Water supply and wastewater doesn't pertain to us. I think that climate change mitigation and resilience could potentially be paired if we did something with the um, town hall. How? At, what are the times on these? Like, what is the, the uh, deadlines here? 
So it depends on the funding stream. Like yeah. we would match up to funding. Okay. Um, so you know, the us helping with applications and those sorts of things would depend on whatever deadlines gotcha. that are yeah. attached to the funding. Yeah. Um, but this program is a um, is a two year program that okay. we have this kind of. So the the program itself is this MTAP, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's the municipal tech. Yeah. That okay. looks like it runs through March thirty first of twenty five. Yeah. Okay. I would think we would want to participate. And when you say um, technical assistance, does that also include like helping write the grants, or Absolutely. is it? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And it's only these grants that are here. No, these are. I'm sorry. Let me let me just step back. These are just examples from another town that I've worked with, oh. and I wanted to give you guys an idea of what a scope of work might look like. Mm -hmm. So this town had their five priorities that they picked were emergency generators, solar array, heat pump and solar storage, EV chargers, and then they had a water project. And so we're working. Um, okay. So you would you would come up with a list of, and I'd work with you on a list of priorities that you have, and then we'd come up with a scope of work, um, and then a, match that to funding opportunities. Okay. And then the fun happens when you can start, you can help, you know, write the grants and those sorts of things. Okay, so you guys have enough staffing now to do that, because for a while it was really tight. It was tight, and, and Claire Rock left. Yes. Yeah, oh, oh, she did? Claire Rock has, So who's doing the brownfields, you? I'm doing brownfields. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we are hiring a new land use. Um, we just hired a new transportation planner. Okay. So we now have... Christian's uh, still there, right? Christian is okay. still there. Oh, he's still there. Yes. Okay, good. Sitting in the head seat. <laughs> right. Yep. Um, so we now have two transportation planners. Okay. We have our energy planner, Sam Lash. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. And then Brian Voigt is our natural resources planner. Okay. And Lincoln Frazier is another a newer um, natural resources planner. Okay, good. Um, okay, so yeah, you're doing that. And okay, truth be told, I totally forgot about that meeting. I really did that meeting last time if there wasn't a problem. Oh yeah, for I the didn't the even <laughs> my calendar. I was so busy at work, I didn't even look at my calendar. I was so mortified, because I usually am very good about those meetings, even though they're few and far between. Um, and I was probably the reason there wasn't a problem. Um, so the first, Step in this is for us to say we want to do it and then come up with a list. That's right. Yep, opt in or out and then come up with a list of priorities. And I can meet with whoever to, you know, kind of look at what those priorities and maybe narrow it down. Mm -hmm. or, or with this, you know, we had a list of priorities that we combined some of those because they were in the same kind of um, arena for funding. Okay. So, like, I'm guessing something like, um, well, so some of these fundings are small. Yeah. Um, but you said this is just an example. This is just an example. And some of those are small, like the, okay. you know, it might be that they were looking at how to get an EV charger, so it might be a combination of funding sources. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Um, did you, are you doing anything with the MERP? Help so MERP that. is SAMS. Okay. That bailiwick. And um, so this wouldn't go towards MERP, but... Like this is an example of where Sam and I worked together to see what she's gotcha. doing for Merv okay. and where the projects, you know, might okay. there might be some coinciding. So this this is more about um, so your thing is around these particular um, technical assistance that's with the agency of administration. Yes, and it's okay, and they're really. The, you know, kind of have a, it's not a narrow scope, it's a wide scope, but it's mm -hmm. definitely to be eligible, they need to fall within right. these categories. But it's also for like a municipality. So like, I'm thinking like Russ and his group wouldn't be able to take advantage of the housing, right? Because they're not municipality. Right. But what municipality would be doing housing? It would be working with a municipality who's maybe partnering, like, Say you wanted to work with Downstreet or something to have a some kind of housing development okay. happen in Middlesex. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you could put that. Or like a program. revitalization program or something like that that the municipality is putting together and pushing forward. Exactly. But. Yep, and supporting. Yeah. Or yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would say we probably want to like. Do we have to say tonight? <coughs> yes, we want to sign up. 
It's just a yay or nay. Yeah, oh. yeah. There's an opt in or opt out. You don't have to do it tonight, but it does have to be um, a select board meeting. It does okay. have to come to a select board. Like a vote. Yeah. Oh. Let's so, vote. let's just vote. Right? And there's, I think so. Like, there's, there's nothing like we get into this and we decide that there's, you know, we're not trying. too many hurdles or anything like that. Like we're not locked in. Then you're not locked to, in. It's already, it's a program through the agency of administration, so it's already. Paid for its free technical assistance, basically. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's so many different <laughs> programs out there. One of the first things that jumps to my mind is that, you know, uh, typically the programs that are out there require some sort of investment from the town and the outlook that we're facing from like the FEMA end of things. So just everybody's like trying to pull from limited resources. So yeah. I think. Even though there are grants that are paying for the majorities of projects, one of the things that I worry about is just uh, the town's responsibility piece. Yeah. While it may be small in the grand scheme of things, there is a limited pool of resources there. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that would be dependent on the funding, you know, picture. If there's a match or something, you know, maybe it's not a good fit for Middlesex, you know. But, but it feels like it feels like some of the work that that your team would be doing would be looking at how you may be able to braid or stack funding from various programs and exactly. whatnot to make the most of any sort of match that the town might have to bring to the table for something. For know, instance, it, it seems like there would be value in even exploring what's available. So. Right. I mean, for instance, uh, we're facing a significant match from FEMA and all our road work mm -hmm. and we're hoping the state is going to help us out with that match but they haven't done it yet yeah. would, would this potentially apply to some of that could it um i don't know about the but transportation certainly, but certainly uh community recovery yep i mean i think that i mean you know you look at a grouping like climate change mitigation resilience you know to me, that's not isolated just to like building infrastructure or anything, but it also, you know, theoretically could be expanded to the road infrastructure and resiliency there mm -hmm. and, and the effects that climate change just have on, on that infrastructure. So, I mean, if, if it could be, you know, tied into all that where we have a huge potential huge match, you know, we're looking at, you know, somewhere between what? Two hundred and fifty to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars for potential match and the work that we've we've got coming from or have already done and what's coming down the road. Um, you know, I don't know if you're aware. We have to take out a three million dollar bond to help pay for line of credit. Line yeah, of credit. sorry, uh, line of credit um, uh, to help you know pay and, and generate cash flow to help do uh, get this work completed. Mm -hmm. um, and without any understanding as to what what that uh, match may be from the town, you know, right now it's 25% is what's expected, but there's been lots of conversation around that changing, so. Yeah. Yeah, so this could, I mean, I, I could, you know, spend time seeing what could be stacked to, to help with that, seeing what's out there. Also have my finger on the pulse of when new funding streams come through. Um, you know, matching them to projects. Um, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're gonna make the motion, Liz. Uh, sure. I'll move that we um, say yay <laughs> to being uh, uh, to working with um, Central Mount Regional Planning Commission on the MTAP. MTAP is that what it's called? MTAP. Yeah. MTAP program. Is there a second to that motion? Our professional seconder, Mr. Dwyer. Thank you. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah. We'll be working with you. Yeah. Nice to see you. It's nice to see you too. Yes. Yeah. So before you. So. This application is my understanding. For the so this is. Is that. You get a yay from us in the in the meeting here, but are we responsible to start this process? No, you can just connect with me on what the prior priorities okay. are. Okay. Yeah. So we need to make a list. Yeah, basically. make a list of, okay. of priorities. Yeah. So we should maybe put that on the agenda for our next meeting, where everybody can be thinking about it. Does that make sense? Did you hear that, mm -hmm. Sarah? Yep. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, highway report. Gentlemen. Can I get a report on the FEMA? FEMA stuff? Sure. sure. The uh, All Seasons says hopefully by the end of today they have completed the safety work on East Hill and Center Road. There was a culvert that was added to Center Road for them to do, and I guess it, that's going to be weather dependent, but. That's the one going up towards uh, Picard Corners. Yeah, it's just above Brook Road yeah. on Center Road. There's a culvert there that really bad. needs to be Oh, yeah, it's bad. Yeah. So they're going to see if they can do that. But weather depending on it, we could be socked. Could be in winter any, tomorrow. We could be socked in any time. So as far as that safety contract goes on East, East Hill and Center Road, they're in good shape. Um, other than that culvert that was added. Um, on the second uh, contract, they've got some ditching and some ledge removal to do. And again, that'll be weather depending. But other than that, uh, it should be in pretty good shape. That was Davy Road. That was Davy Road and Upper Sunnybrook. Oh, Sunny oh that ledge, yeah. And as far as the, the other FEMA work, that I've been working on a pile of stuff for Vic and Eric and I to get together and, and try to finish up stuff so we can go out to bed. Future projects starting up next spring. Yeah, because now's the time, right? Yeah. Right. Do you have a sense of how many there are? How many? How many future projects for spring remain? Yeah, I mean, there's, uh, there's... Depends how many we combine, right? Probably, yeah. But there's, uh, I've got a list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 roads. Now, some of these can be combined. If there's smaller projects, so it, it's into one project. Uh, but there's uh, some of them that are going to be pretty pricey. Uh, East Hill, for example, I've been working on that one, but that, that's going to be up towards a half a million dollars what? to complete that. There's what, 19 culverts that have to be replaced? The 19 the culverts is a huge number, and then, the, well, the, there's some ditching and ditch stone that needs to be done, but they are you know, it's like 5,000 yards of, of gravel to put on the road afterwards. And that is in the FEMA, the FEMA people did a site visit with Eric and that was in the meeting afterwards. Yeah. And that's one of the roads. So those numbers go up real quick when you start talking so about So they, you can say that this is because of the flood? It is because of the flood. I mean, but people are <coughs> rot driving on the road right now, right? Yeah, you can drive on the road, but the road's the road has pretty coarse material on it. And okay. This here is a top dressing. I think yeah. it's four inches. Mm -hmm. And part of the thing is mitigation. There may be some culverts that are are going to be upsized. Right. That type okay. Thing. So, huh? Sarah, how long can we ask for money from FEMA? Like two years or something? Uh, well, you can ask the treasurer, but the. Um, we have to get in some of these projects by January 14th, and we have gotten those in. That's the debris removal that's done, that's obligated. That means it's in Washington, D.C., and it's good to go. The uh, B work is what we worked on on Tuesday. We, some, Dorinda and Steve went through the laborious project of going through every single timesheet, and Eric, timesheet, uh, looking at equipment, material slips, and invoices to match up road by road, what was spent, who, who worked when, how many hours, what equipment did they work on, and how many chainsaws were involved. And there, that was submitted to FEMA last week on Friday, and then we had a meeting on Tuesday. Jerry asked for some more follow-up questions, and now he is going to put together his report for FEMA. 
They're going to take out some really big projects that are over $250,000 because those will meet with extra scrutiny from Washington, D.C. and try to lump the lower level ones together. There, do you remember how many projects there were that they said over, over 250? Was it five? Five. five. Yeah. yeah. So those are big ones like Culver Hill, Brook Road, and yeah. we probably won't be compensated for that anytime soon. But the, hopefully when they get the smaller ones together and they put them together, we should maybe we can have a faster track on those. Mm -hmm. I guess then my question is for like these that come in the spring, like yeah, how, how far out We've in the world? We've got two years from the date of the event, was mm -hmm. Three? Yeah, so, two, two. 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 So this, those are called C projects. Those are future projects, and those have their own timeline. And they have to be first FEMA approved to work like... It's not like you're like, oh, I'm going to fix this and hope that FEMA reimburses. We have, we no, have we have to put them out to bid. Yeah. Okay. No, I know, but well, like we had, we had, we had a list of roads that need to be worked on. They approved that. We, they okay. already know what needs they to be done. They already know. Perfect. Yeah, I'm not sure they approved it. But well, they right, but yeah. yeah, they know. So it's this. So to be yeah. clear, this C list. That's what Steve just gave us that list right. for. Right. right. That C list has been estimated cost and handed over to FEMA and is already in their queue, so to speak, to review That's correct. and give us approval on. Right. So to answer your question, you know, theoretically, they would approve that before we authorized anybody to do work on it. But in the meantime, we need to be getting bids to get actual costs on that work. And be on, on the list to get done because before you know it, there's not anybody that's going to be able to do it. Because you, we're not yeah. the only town doing that. Okay. And we also, like this all seasons work, uh, Jerry from FEMA was saying, I think that because it's safety work, you're trying to make sure the school buses don't slide off the road, we might be able to get that into the B category. So, right. So we're so going to try to get those invoices in as soon as possible yeah. so that we can get yeah. that done and packed away. So do we have, you mentioned half a million dollar just for East Hill. Do we know what the those 17 roads, those overall, do we know what that number, that estimate is? Not yet. We may need more than $3 it's, million. Dollars. It's going to be significant, that's for sure. <laughs> but you were saying, just made a mention that uh, FEMA approved this before these go out to bid and you award these. I think that this is work that's from they moved from the phase of emergency work to permanent work. Mm -hmm. So they are going to be a part of all of these roads. Sure. Like they've already been sort of approved by FEMA. Well, they've got them yeah. in the, and so they know they're on the They know they're on the list. They don't look down. They, we, we had to put a number to the roads and to each culvert individually. Uh, so when you say a number, you mean a budget number? Budget number. Mm -hmm. and now we'll once we get this work done we will go back to that sheet and update those numbers yeah. so that they have right. you're moving from the budget so, number to the bid number right so steve do we have the box culvert or culverts on lower sunny brook on the list the, they are on the list to be updated i have submitted for a new hydraulic study down there because that'll be determined on what gets put there same with portal road and same with East Hill. Yeah. Thank you. Along those same lines, we contacted, uh, got contact with uh, Jaron Borg. Borg. It's Jaron, right? I believe so. Jaron. Jaron. Uh, Borg. Yep. He's the uh, stream alteration permit guy. Yep. And he's going to give us a permit. We haven't. I haven't seen it. I, I have haven't to check seen it. it. We're yeah. checking on it. Yeah. And to take the gravel up 200 feet, if we can get either way on um, uh, McCullough Hill and uh, the bridge at the bottom of McCullough Hill. Yeah. And the only thing we can't do is he wants to make sure we don't go below the footings, but we won't. So we can and that's do that. gravel we can use, right? Huh? Yes. Or what's yes, that? that's our gravel. We're covering it. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. If you want it. I think we want it. <laughs> It'll cost you. Do you want to spend the money? So, and yeah. I don't, I'm not so sure about that being a FEMA participation. He didn't know, right? Yeah. I, 
I just need some clarification what you mean by taking to gravel to up 200 feet. Are you taking it out of the river? Yes. Okay. So when, you, when you're taking up 200 feet, where, what does that mean? From the bridge upstream 200 oh, feet. Oh, I see. Because it came down in the flood? And down. Yes. Yeah. And downstream you're just recovering you get it. to us. Yes. So oh, both, both ways, 200, so to yes. 400 feet total. 400 feet total of gravel in the, in the, in the brook. You're going to use the... the so why... Gonna I'm sorry. I just want to be clarified. Right. Yeah, 200 feet. So why wouldn't, why wouldn't FEMA pay for that? Yeah, never know. It's a recovery. It's a recovery. Well, it's a mitigation. It's, it's a hazard mitigation. Yeah. At the very mitigation. least, it's hazard, hazard mitigation. Right, right, right. You're preventing future. We just need to get clarification in, in on that to make sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah, before we recover too many yards yeah. of that material. Yeah, right. But we got to hire somebody to do it. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, we can't do that. Huh? Yeah, we can't do that. It's like you need a crane. You need a big mother excavator. You need a big <laughs> excavator. Yeah. Okay. And trucks. Yeah. And trucks. It's going to be wet. It could be. <laughs> well, it's going to be heavy. Be. <laughs> so wait, till it's awful. It's wait till it's covered with it a foot of ice. <laughs> oh, and we have to also, at the same time, repair the... Uh, Stone fill that's uh, on the, the uh, west side of the bridge. Yeah. That rattled down due to the uh, excessive water of uh, July 9th and 10th. Hmm. And 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 uh, I know we talked with uh, Bridget, and I forget who those people were that she had here, but evidently nobody got a hold of uh, of uh, Jaron. So. And the other thing was that big root ball that's uh, uh, on in the river, in the in the Great Brook, yeah. up by by uh, Don Jones's, and they will they don't they wouldn't they they wouldn't participate in that they wouldn't they wouldn't because uh, that's on private land. So you they, know it's even, the brook, they it's said you could go land. in, huh? Even though it's the brook, it's on private land. That's right. Mm -hmm. If you want to go in the, pro the they might help the uh, property owner. I mean, they might give the property owner a permit. They're not going to help anybody. But, but if they yeah. if they want to take it out, but he wasn't too concerned wasn't about concerned that. About he it said at all. that uh, it's not a big deal. It's uh, because the water can get. Uh, Underneath it, and around it, and around it. So he said, until the next flood. Until the next flood. Yeah, until a bunch more debris comes down and gets hung up on that thing. Yeah. And we have a dam there. We yeah. yeah we didn't uh, critique it. We just yeah. telling you what he said. We just got to keep our eye on the prize, boys, and prioritize, 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 because. Yeah. There's an overwhelming amount of stuff that we could do if we had unlimited funds. He did uh, advise that we get a um, professional uh, arborist mm -hmm. to unhook that if we do, because it, you can get killed pretty easy. Either that or use a big, big machine. With a thumb, yeah. Yeah. You're talking about that root ball? Yes. There's a lot of pressure on that, yeah. all different ways. There you go. There you go. All Anything we have else, to, gentlemen? Um, all three trucks are on the road, ready to go for tomorrow, and the salt shed roof is done. What's the weather forecast? Snow. Till freezing rain or? No, I don't think you're gonna see much of that. Okay. Snow then when. rain. We might get three, four inches. Yeah. Not too bad. Percent. Okay. I have my snow tires. I am totally not ready. I have my snow tires on. You get your snow tires on your We car? are. Yeah. Thank I God. Do. I'm all ready. And it's four wheel drive. So. Good job. <laughs> I don't have that rear wheel drive anymore. That's all I can say. Thank God. Anything else, board members? Um, okay, guys. No. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Well, thanks, Steve. Yep. It's great to see that work done on East Hill. Those, that, those two covers were scary, both of them. Yeah. The one by weeds and the one down the hill. Yeah. Bad. 
Okay. Monthly meeting with a Montpelier, Montpelier, Middlesex <laughs> really? Volunteer Fire Department and budget workshop. So, gentlemen. Uh, busy month for us. 13 calls for the fire department. Oh, thanks, um, 13 calls for the task squad, combined and, and single. Um, all the vehicles were out um, numerous times. The big thing, um, you may have heard about the RK Miles fire. Uh, we did support that with nine people, three vehicles. Um, one of our folks was working with Berlin, Berlin up on their tower. Um, we got praise from Waterbury on a good job that we did nice. down there. Great. Um, Thank you. So uh, I think that went well. I didn't print out what they have on the police department. The city and the fire department have write-ups thanking everybody. I haven't printed those out yet. But if you want to go to the Facebook pages and see that. Um, there's a list of all the calls. We did have a, um, an F-250 truck fire. Those never go well. Um, the, the rear wheels probably are salvageable, as is the tailgate. Um, Wait, what kind of truck fire? A Ford F-250 gas engine with a, or gas with a full tank. Ooh. So um, we put at least 3,000 gallons trying to get it out. Um, when Waterbury got there, they used foam to try to get it out. And then we finally went to dry chem to smother it and get it out. Oh, it no. Was, it was uh, not a, did not want to go out. And that's what just gas. What line is that? What line I don't, even, I don't even want to think about lithium. Oh, here it is, 09. Um, most of the stuff was Terrible. within, well, not on the interstate. Um, we had slide off and a reported car fire, but it was just uh, overheating. Um, we had to get an air pack uh, belt uh, fixed. The, they replaced it, that was under warranty. And one of our gas meters failed um, when we went to a call. So engine one came up, we used that one. Um, I just got the estimate back on that and it's gonna be um, $1,048.90 to get a new meter. The, those prices have jumped tremendously as with anything else, but we need it. Um, I did find out that it was the O2 sensor that that uh, had the problem. Um, it was, the sensor was uh, two years and uh, six months old. And they say, well, they, they die around two years old. Our experience is yes, but we get a warning that it's failed. It doesn't eat the meter up, um, but we're getting a new, a new gas meter because we need to have one on each side of the town. Um, as far as the rescue, um, the new radio is installed. We had to go with a different radio because of the configuration of the cab. Um, the one we had wasn't going to work. Um, so that's installed and works. Um, it's insured. And then Sarah and I are working on registration because DMV is not the friendliest place online and they won't answer their phone as to which form we're supposed to use to fill out. And apparently now they're charging um, $12 for five year municipal plates. At least that's what's on their website. I don't know. Um, so once that's um, that's done, we'll tonight we're going to talk about when we're going to do it. My guess is probably next weekend. Mm -hmm. um, start swapping it over and uh, configuring that to to run. But uh, we're happy with the truck, right? Very. Very. Yep. Very. Uh, Eric will be really happy when it's out of. Right now, it looks like. We have three fire apparatus up in that building. Well, it's not in the building anymore. Oh, where is it? Out back. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're, once we get it registered, we can get it on the road, and then we'll get Middlesex put on it. Then we could sell the old, or give yep. it away, or no, we can scrap sell it. it got, it's, it's got value to it. It's so. value, and tires are good. <laughs> um, so that's about all for the fire department. I do have a question. I don't know who can help with this. Who determines the house numbering on the roads? We have an E911 coordinator, Mitch Bouchette. Because we have, a, have an issue that I found during the possible pond um, breaching. 
there's a house on Center Road at 611. Right across the street, there's a driveway, and the house is way down behind that house with the barn, right across from Sedan. And they have a street sign 560. If it's based on driveway location, I'm thinking that should be like 610. Because when I, when I looked for GPS address on that house, that didn't have one. So when we had our evacuation plan going, that was a, well, this is where the house is, but there was no street number to go with it. Um, so I just trying to, I, I think that's a wrong number for that house. Um, I was under the understanding that it's based on the driveway location, not how far back up in or left or right the house is. I would think it would be because the intent is to find the end of the driveway. Once you find the driveway, you're going to find the house, right? Hopefully. Yeah. If, if the driveway doesn't do one of these and go yeah. to two different houses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if, if you could check with him and have him get in touch with me so we can figure that out. Because I, I don't want to get a, a call for 560, whether it's fire or ambulance, and it not showing up. And we can't, we don't know where that is. Yeah? I'm sorry, it, it says, it says 510, but it should be 560? No, it says 560. It, I think it should be 610 or 612, because it's across the street from the big white house on the corner there, before Zedon. No, 560, Z911 is not right. I don't believe so. All right, I'm going to and, and 611 is across, the, almost directly across the street from that driveway. And uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's are coming up. Great time to change batteries. Mark the month and year yes, on them. And you. your smoke detectors, carbon dioxide detectors, gas meters if you have them. Um, and even if you have a hardwired system, replace all the batteries because one dead battery will set the whole system off. And then we spend an enormous amount of time taking each one down, finding out which one is the problem. Thank you for the reminder. In fact, I just thought about it the other day. I was like, oh, Thanksgiving is a good time to change my batteries that I haven't changed in probably three years. So thank you. <coughs> they won't always go beep with the battery warning. They may just go off. Right. And then we will come up and say, we can't find anything. Let's check the batteries. We have your budget request. Correct. Yes, that's. Thank you. Um, basically, I tried to keep everything status quo. Um, I did raise up fast squad money because we are now required by the state as emergency responders, the EMTs, correct, on uh, not all the fire department, just the EMTs, to carry epinephrine, which is epi, that's up to date, and also Narcan. And we have to purchase that through suppliers. So, Eric, can you just tell me, should this actually say budget fiscal year 24, 25 right. in the green column? Yeah. Did I? Oh, I probably didn't write it okay. down. Yes. I, okay. I was very confused. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was looking at that, too. Okay. So, 24, 25. Yep. Okay. So. Yep. Um, and I think Dorinda and I figured out that we're figuring that the radio dispatch um, cost is, would we say it was six or 30,000? 30,678.43 plus 3,017. Yeah. So how much, 36,000? So it'd be? About 33,678. Yeah. So not 28? No. No. 33 yeah. what? I'm sorry. 33,678. 43. I believe okay. is the number we came up with. Like isn't, it, isn't it unbelievable what a percentage of our budget that is? Yeah, and isn't it unbelievable how it goes up relentlessly every year? That's also including the extra that we're paying towards the um, future. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's right. Right. That tower or something. Is there any other questions on this? No. How much is that contribution that you guys make for the future? Uh, three thousand. This year it'll be three thousand and seventeen dollars. Okay. What is three thousand seventeen? It's a it's a payment towards the future upgrades of the dispatch system. Okay. Got it. Just... The interest rate is staying the same on the fire station. 
Or we don't I, know. I was not. I, don't I, didn't change, maybe, I didn't change uh, any of that because I don't know. I'm going to adjust those. You'll see all those That'll adjustments go down a little. when I plug this into my sheet. Yeah, you wouldn't have yeah I don't have that information. When does the commission get paid off? Uh, got a bit. It's like five years. Yeah. I five think. more years? Yeah, it? it's about yeah. five more years. Was it a 20 year note? Uh, was it that long? Yeah, my We're talking four about the years. Bond. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering about that. It's not because I've been, when I talked to the bond bank, they were talking about if we did a bond for the town hall repair, you could potentially like make it sort of seamless between the two bonds so it wouldn't be as hard on the voters because it was, you can like put off interest for two years or something like that. And I think they have a lot of four tricks years. They can do. Yeah, yeah, there were some tricks that they had up their sleeves. 2030. So that's yeah, six. Six years. So that was over a 20 year note, wasn't it? Wasn't that built in 2000? Mm -mm, it wasn't until that. It was four? 19. Three? No, it was, it was after 2004. It was after 2004? Yeah, I joined yeah. the department in 2004. I, I want to say it was like 2007. Maybe. Could have been a 25 year bond. Yeah, so yeah, it says it matures in 2029 is what the yeah, CIP holds. I have here, but yeah, it's. Tw it's the year is probably, but it's in the 30 budget, FY30 yeah. budget, right. I yeah. believe. Okay, right. so that's so where the five why years, it yeah, okay. Reads that way. Um, I remember I was on the select board when we broke ground down there, so, and I thought that was like in the early, wasn't that like early 90s? No. Something like that. No. no. Nope. It was, it was well after I started on the department. Really? Hmm. I, I wasn't part of the planning, but I. I remember down there with shovels. Was a couple Peter, years you were there. In, yeah, right? I was you, there. You, me, Mary. Um, uh, Mary Alexander, I believe. Yeah, probably. I've been here since 2020, and I voted on that bond. On that bond? Really? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure, yeah. 2020? The years. I the mean, years 20, that, 2000, sorry. 2000. <laughs> 2000. The yeah, years they do roll by, days. don't they? They do. That would be late 90s, so that probably would be Maybe, right. Maybe, yeah. That's about right. Yeah. So uh, any update on the heating situation down there? So far, it's working. I'm going to text Sam Lash. I'm going to email Sam Lash and ask her what is, like, the, she, like, a month ago said, we're getting ready to schedule. And there's, like, it's like the pace of a snail. <laughs> Why does that surprise you? I'm like, well, it's making me now feel, it's, it's now making it's me feel a season. little more hopeful about the MERP being extended for years to come. I mean, it's just like. They never extend, Liz. They never extend. Yeah, no, they already said they were. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, no. You are welcome. See you yep. I'm right behind you. Have we got the or the order somewhere? Someone around? Right here. Uh, not yet. No, they're here. They haven't gone around. Here, don't, yeah, don't, don't I was put them in this mess. Them, send them right down. Yeah, that's a good idea. You want right. another one? All right. You gave yours away. What's that? You gave yours away. Oh, you sort of make right. you do the walking. Oh, I thought you gave them this. Sorry, I could be helpful. Oh, oh. <laughs> hey, before, thanks, Liz. Before you go. Do you want one of these? Thank you very much. Oh, no. Yeah, that's not, yeah, this is budget status, not yeah. the budget. Yeah. Good. Thank you. There. Correspondent Sarah? Wait, that, wait, that we're done with the budget people? Yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> um, so, uh, do you want me to follow up on 
the need road situation? Quickly. Okay. Yes. On the way, the what? The need road situation. Yes. So when we last left, which need never road. ends. Road. They, the Sam had sent some. Oh right. She has sent, Samantha had sent some videos of rocks being placed on Zach French's property by Zach French, the chief. That Samantha said were within the, not the traveled way, but within the right of way adjacent to the traveled way. Within the roadway. In the roadway. And the board made a decision to write a letter to Zach French saying, giving him a certain time to get those rocks out of there. I tried to do that letter, and in the middle of my, my brain wasn't working very well last week, I just said to Peter, I can't write this letter. I don't, I don't, I just don't have the skills. I don't have the skills with the highway ordinance or Title 19. Can we give it to Rob, our town attorney? Send it over to Rob, our town attorney. That was Friday or Thursday night, Thursday or Friday. And then on Saturday, I was here, uh, Evelyn Prim wrote and asked all you guys for any <coughs> correspondence or communication FOIA. I sent her the video, the, the Samantha email, which was the last thing I think I had. And then um, at the same time, Evelyn said the rocks have been moved. Uh, Zach, she complained about the fact that they hadn't known about that this was coming up at the last meeting, that, you know, I don't know. But anyway, she said, Why the did they put the damn rocks there? Why can't I they just know. leave? So <laughs> I forwarded that to Peter and to the town attorney and said, You guys deal with this now. And I haven't heard from them. But I did, Samantha was in the office on Monday. And I did, and she did confirm that the rocks were moved. So that is where we left it. So the temporary crisis is averted. I Until believe next so. Time. Until next time. Yeah. Well, and then the pictures of the. Um, uh, alleged Samantha and Steve driving on the lawn because it's the right of way. It's technically where the road could be when they didn't need to. They could have stayed on the driveway, but instead right. they were making a point to annoy each other. And I think we should have nothing to do with that. Okay. Well, I anyway, personally I think that Rob, our. I haven't heard from you, so I. so. Rob was all ready to write a letter to Zach, but I think I haven't heard anything. More I'd say we can. I would. I would say we should send a letter and just say, you know, please, per our agreement, do not put any rocks, logs, noise. whatever. The parked cars in the right of way. I don't think we can do anything about. But can we also send a letter saying don't drive? No, we can't because it's That's technically the spot. That the, I mean, that is just, it's basically childish behavior right. on both parties, as far as I'm concerned. And the only thing that we as a town could potentially do is send the reminder to Zach to, or even to both parties, to not put stuff in the right of way. And that things like, like, here's the reality. Their front door is in the right of way. We can't tell them not to put their front door. Their cars are in the right of way. People do that all the time. We, and we are not going to police that right. that, right? We can't. And we just, they have to learn to live together as neighbors. And we cannot tell them that they can't park their car in a driveway that has part, is part in the right of way. We just can't. There's no rule that you, I don't think there really is a rule that you can't have something in the right of way. Or in if, the it's not, if it's people not, park, people if it's park not, people park cars in the roadway. If it's all the not time. preventing a car from going by, there's rocks in the right of way everywhere, right? You go and you look in any right of way, and there's big rock there. Yeah, I know. I hit one uh, right. just the other night. So, like, <laughs> I, you know, it's right like, Hill Road. yeah. Well, I guess what I'm looking for is direction from you guys. I mean, there are two arguments here. The one argument is that the town maintains its rights its rights of way and that by you you know it's it, you can't it's hard to be that's why i couldn't write that letter because i was thinking there are so many people who are on class three roads that are in the right of way like you know our friend on burke road just got a whole farm. On the right you away. know so yeah. i don't know but if you do you guys want me to go back to, what, do you, what do you want me to do because i don't really feel I think well, here's the other can we just talk about one other part of this issue while we're doing this okay um I think we should throw up that section of the road. Completely and the reason downgraded. is, I'm sick and tired. Number one reason mm -hmm. is, I've had enough of this childish back and forth. 
But the real reason is, as a class four road, theoretically, we have to replace that bridge or that culvert. And we're not doing it. And if somebody goes down there and drives into that river, that creek or whatever it is there, I see potential liability for the town. And I'm not interested in spending the money to replace that bridge and or culvert. So if we throw up the road, then we no longer have to do that. We make it a trail. Well, but you throw it up, you throw it up at the, the point where that post No, is. I say throw up the whole class four section. Right from Paul Sermon. Right Harris from Paul Sermon. Right. I don't you know bet. that we can because there's two houses. We've never set that precedent. We've set the precedent of one house. I don't know. You could do whatever you want, but I guess my question is do you want to throw it up or do you want to downgrade it to a legal trail? trail. Okay. That's, those are different things. I think we want to turn it into a trail. I think that causes far too much. Uh, I mean, we don't strife. maintain it now. No. I'm sorry. Listen. I was going to say that that will cause more strife trying to share the the land boundaries. So I think if we can turn it into that's, a trail. That's, that's, that's a neighborhood problem, not a town problem. I know, but I guess what I'm trying to say is they use it like to get access for wood and stuff like that. I don't want to, I don't want to be jerks about it. I think we're downgrading to a trail is fine because we don't have to maintain anything. What on the about trail. just putting a couple concrete blocks in front of that and with a, with a sign? Does that do away with our need to I don't think so. replace the uh, culvert or bridge? I don't think so. I mean, if they say we want to start growing corn in that field and we need and we need access and there's no, you know, the bridge is out and we need our bridge replaced, I think we'd better replace it. But I would throw it up, um, I, I personally... Starting at, the, at yes, the waterway. at the waterway. Yeah, you throw it up there. Um, then the, really what it is the trail is on the other side. That's a town does trail. It, does, the, does the class four road extend beyond that? that yeah, it goes all the way down yeah. to the interstate. It goes all does the way down the interstate. Really? Oh, yeah. 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 It's big crazy. field. It's like a field down there. Yeah. yeah. It's a big field. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's huge. Yeah. I mean, and, and I, I mean, guess we have not. We we literally have done nothing out there. I mean, what it what brings like us all trail. to the to the fore is the idea yeah. of the bridge or culvert. Yeah, that seems like you should do that. That makes sense. Right. I mean, the only reason we wouldn't. Well, no. Even if we if we turned it up into a trail, you could still if in you know a hundred years from now somebody wanted to develop it and upgrade it and upgrade, upgrade it, it you could right mm -hmm. it's when it's thrown up that you can't do that right. anymore okay yeah I think we should do a trail but I don't think we should do trail necessarily um, all the way from the beginning because there are people that there are two houses on that and I think that's setting a precedent that is not a good precedent. I think one house is okay, but two houses, yeah. Yeah, but there are no houses after that abutment, right? There's no houses where the no. corporate's blown out. Correct. There's nothing there. Correct. No, there's nothing. Yeah, I would just that. What, what, uh, what does it take to, to reclassify moving it back to a roadway later? same process. We could say, I mean, you know, it's, it's the process. But it's not an impossible process. I mean, if somebody, if somebody was going to put four house lots out there, for instance, would we consider doing it? Would we make them pay the cost of repairing the bridge and then we take it over? Who knows what we do? Well, from the town's end, it's not a big deal for us. We just have no. to go to a public hearing. And you have Rob's letter about the Wilch Park Drive, right? I do. I'm going to bring that up in a minute. It's the same yeah. type of thing. So there are a couple of ways you can do it. But if a developer came down there and brought that land, then they would probably have to petition the board, and they would have to have public hearings. And they, you could get them to pay the cost of surveying and upgrading the road and you know, bringing it up to standards. You know, similar to similar to what we did, as I still call it, Skinner Road, whatever it, whatever it is there. Leland Farm. Leland Farm Road. Leland Farm Road. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, where did you guys leave me on that letter? What do you want me to do? I, I think, think we told them we were going to send a letter. Yeah, we ought to at least it. send a letter and say our understanding is that the rocks have been removed. Steve and has a question. He's on that. You can barely see it, but Steve is Steve on Dennis. there with a. Oh, there is this. Yeah. Yep. Okay, Steve. 
Hi, this is actually Samantha Bodwin. Um, I just wanted to mention, you guys were, you kept saying um, right of way. So what this is all about is the roadway. Right, I just yeah. want to make sure that's clear yeah. to everybody. Yeah. yeah, 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 you're right, Samantha. Yes, we keep, we keep screwing that up, I apologize. Well, the roadway is a right of way. No, there's a difference in the width what's roadway compared to the center of the road compared to the okay, right so of way. Okay, so if you throw the road up, <clears throat> what do you call that section from Samantha's driveway to Paul Sermon area, plus or minus? Still, still class four. That's still the class four. four. Okay. Stays as a class four. So you still got the same issue. issue. No, it's the no, rest of because, it. No, because the bridge is beyond that. Or that the is correct. place where the bridge was. What? That is correct. I understand that completely, but I thought the the idea was to mitigate the back and forth between. Oh, that's not right. Well, I don't disagree. Our our policy in the past has been one house. Right. Well, I, I don't think. Open, I mean, I don't. I'm, I'm just looking work. for. I'm just looking for clarity. I'm no, not no, no, no. I, I appreciate. I don't care which way we go, whatever it is, but but I just want clarity. That's all. No. For myself. Okay. Thank you. Well, I agree with. I agree with Liz. Although I will say, in the past, we threw up class three roads, didn't we? Didn't we? Like, isn't Merritt no, we Road? we downgraded them. You did, did we downgrade? We, we downgraded them, them to class three to class four. No, well, we didn't. That's, we that's, downgraded them to ownership so that they so, owned it themselves. Um, we Merritt, Merritt, Merritt roads. Uh, well, were, we threw them up. Yeah, yeah, we yeah up, like Bolio right. Road. There was one we downgraded, and that was Bill Reinecke's driveway, basically. And that Warren Road, and that was because there's a big culvert there's the there. There's the culvert, right? And if it had gone out, would have taken out the rest of Culver Hill Road. So yeah. that's you. That was the one. But otherwise, like at the end of Chase Road to Casey Ellison's doorstep, you discontinued it. We had absolutely no business doing the the Mac Road. That wasn't our road to throw up. So so this is the so this is the difference. We threw those up. Because we were plowing them and they cost us money to And they were driveways and we And had they were yeah, they were basically they were private three. driveways, but yeah. they were all class three. We That's never true. threw it we so so now the question is, can you turn a class four into a trail that has people's houses on it, or does it have to be a class four? Like like why don't we turn it into a trail? What was the last thing it was the um, We're not Dolan plowing it anyway. Road. The end of Dolan oh, Road. It, but it's the, the don't forget the bridges and culverts. As class four, we're responsible for maintaining the bridges and culverts. Right. We don't well, plow it. I think what Liz is getting yeah. at now yeah. with the two with the two houses is that if you turned it to a trail from Paul's driveway beyond to the and made the whole thing a trail instead of maintaining the class four to this point, I believe that's where. Yeah, you're that is where that is where I'm going. So if you don't, but the question is, can you turn? A place that's a class four with homes on it into a trail. Well, it sounds oh, you because like you, threw up, you threw up Bolio. You didn't turn those into trails. You just threw them. You up. threw them up okay. and they own I them. See what, right. I see what you're getting at. Yes. Uh, I don't think there are any restrictions on what you can do with those those roads. But that's why that process. That's why the public process is so extensive and timely. Time consuming. So, you need 30 days notice, you need to warn it on an agenda, you need to do a site visit, 30 days notice for a public for a public hearing, then you need to hold a public hearing, and then you need to write a convincing argument why you decide to do what you do. So, it's a really time consuming process, really, lengthy. Right. But I, there's nothing that I can see in the statutes that says you can't take a class four road and take it to a little And then road. they have to come up with their own driveway you agreement. You can discharge that agreement. road if you want to. You could say, we're not even going to do a legal trail. Guess what? We're just going to discontinue the entire road. Goodbye. So we're giving but, up all rights. Yeah, so just to, be, just to be clear to everyone, and I think I've got this right. I don't want to be sure I have it right. If it's a trail, that means there will be continued public access. Right. Yes, people right. can walk right. on okay. it. Okay. The minute you throw it up and give it to the landowners, nope. then there's no public yeah, access. Yeah, that's correct. That's, I was just going to say that. To, okay. To I, just, I just want to be sure we're yeah. Yeah. thinking right about that because... That's a long road. That goes way out there. And I would I would be, I don't know how it loops around or connects to Colby or, or what happens out there, but uh, I can't remember. I've been out there. I walked out there. It's not, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a tr definitely, it's like a logging road, trail kind of thing. And then it just goes into that big field um, that I think Zach 
I think Zach Jones. owns that field. Yeah. Doesn't he? Yes. And so I think for the sake of keeping some ownership on it, if we were to consider doing that, we would consider doing a trail, not throwing it up. I think throwing it up takes away any future possibility, not in our lifetime necessarily, but of like, you know, development and yeah, I don't growing think I our town. Throwing I don't think, it up. Yeah. Like making it a trail is a different conversation. I think I could get behind that, working it through. Yeah, I like the, I like the, I just, I just don't want the risk of somebody coming to us and saying, I mean, I don't know what it would cost, but based on what we've been paying for these flood repairs, it would be big money. So the one big question that I have around uh, if it's a trail or not, um, just thinking about, let's say residents wanted to walk this and whatnot, uh, do the same boundaries play into the trail as the roadway and right of way? boundaries so if somebody was coming through and they parked along the side of the, the roadway answer. i don't know the answer to that you know, i think there is in title 19 there is a, a rod measurement for legal trails yeah it's narrower okay and do trails allow cars on them right no. so then we can't if we know that a trail doesn't allow a car on it we can't throw it up into it we can't turn it into a trail because they are driving on it i don't know i'm not a lawyer um, yeah i can ask no, uh, I don't think that's true. It's, on, a, it's, a, um, it's a legal trail. It's on his land. Right, right. Well, no, she just said up on no, one of the bare swamps sure. there she where cars can't Marty McMahon Four was, wheelers, motorcycles. And they drove no, away. Well, and then, and then if, if, but if it's a trail, if then they that's really their access and they don't have... But, the, but they drive. The they, that was being driven on all the time, wasn't it? Yeah, And then it's downgraded to a trail and you can't drive a vehicle on a trail, then you're limiting access to their house. That's what I mean. That's what I said. Like, if you really can't, then we're not going to do that. We couldn't do that. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I bet you do. Oh, yeah. But, um... Well, I guess, the. I mean, there's... That's no reason we're going to make a decision. We can't make a decision on this tonight anyway. No. Sarah, if you could just check on that issue of whether you're allowed to drive vehicles on trails. Certainly, there's a lot of that going on. I mean, you're going to need a plow. You're gonna, I mean, it's like the, this is their, you know, basically can the trail be a driveway? Or can a driveway be a trail? Didn't that happen up where Marty McMahon and Joanne Flanagan, that was, wasn't that? And they were driving on it. That was a class four road, though, wasn't it? No, I think they turned it to a trail. Yeah, but yeah, they've been well, driving on it. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask. Yeah, thanks. And then, again, you know, you've got enforcement issues. Last time you downgraded a class four road was a, it was in Dolan Road. Do you remember when you did that? Yeah. Yeah, and that was because there was no way the town could do any maintenance there. You couldn't even get the equipment. Get it that one was totally impassable, though. When you but got I down. can't believe that we've got we can't get any equipment. We can't get any equipment to this part because there's no. Bridge there. Right, there's no bridge. Steve has it's another Steve. question, but it's not Steve. It's Samantha. Samantha? No, well, it's Steven this time. So oh, no, a couple Steve. things. Okay. On Mead Road, there are actually four residents now. Uh, Paul's in-laws have also moved in and built the house there. Also, before you can even have a hearing, according to state legislation, you need 5% of the voters for the town to sign a petition before you can consider changing or reclassifying the road before you have a public hearing even. Two, if you guys think you're gonna sit, you find it totally okay to sit on your ass for an entire year and not enforce state legislation on the things that are happening on this road and then turn around and just give up whatever kind of level of control you want over the road so you can just wash your hands of it, I find that completely unacceptable. I'm not surprised. I'm just going to yeah. clarify that according to Title 19, there are two ways to change the classification of the road. One is by petition, and one is so the select board can make its own motion to follow right. the process, not to make a decision, but to go through the process. So you, just to clarify, you've been through this before. Right. So I don't believe you're correct about that petition, Steve. I can, uh, I got the legislation right in front of me if you'd like me to read it to you, or do you already know this piece of legislation as well? Huh. Steve, do you spend your evenings reading these law books? You 
much. Anything, anything that pertains to an issue in my life, I read the law about it and I do the research you on it. Yes. You could certainly submit that to us, yes. You're not going to read it to us tonight. But All right. I will, I will I believe, send it to you in an email. I believe we have contrary information is what I'm telling you. Okay. And I'm not an attorney. But we have, um, we have, I, taken, I we have taken action downgrading and upgrading roads quite a few times over the years and it has never been done with a petition. That I can remember or aware of. Is anybody else? Victor, you? I don't remember any petitions. I remember the public comes and they can. Yeah, it's a public hearing. Right. Yes. I don't. All I can tell you is to the best advice of our attorney, we will follow the state statutes, however, we do any of this stuff. And if you disagree with our attorney, then I guess you need to hire your attorney and go after him somehow. I'm sorry about that, but it just, you know, you keep saying there's some statute that does something and then, then we never get it or never hear about it or our attorney disagrees with it or who knows what, Steve. I'm not trying to be obnoxious, but I've been sitting on the select board for a long time and we've never had a petition about a road that I can recall. Yep, go ahead, Steve. This is actually Sam, and Steve can send you that legislation, um, but he has actually tried to read legislation during select board meetings. You've actually asked him not to. Um, and I, guess I have the, asked I guess him not the, to. And I guess the frustrating part is I'm going by our road policy and, and state laws, just trying to keep stuff from being altered in the roadway and placed in the roadway. And I feel like if the answer is to try to make it a trail, the entire Mead Road a trail, I don't care past, if, if you're considering like where the bridge is in the stream, that I don't care about. But if you're considering where- I think, I I think, have, that's, what, I think that's what we're talking about. Our, our, uh, our policy in the past has been only, only roads with one house uh, get downgraded, so. You've got, depending on where we drew the line, you either have four houses or two houses. So I don't think, I don't think there's any way, any way the select board is gonna support trying to, trying to uh, downgrade the road that goes to your driveway and to Zach's driveway. The bridge, where the bridge is out is another issue. Yeah, I, I and I agree with you there. I just feel like I've been coming to you guys for help for, for quite a long time and I'm a Middlesex resident so this could happen to any Middlesex resident and I feel like if the response is because you can't get someone to follow our policy to just change it into a trail and kind of wash your hands of it that does not Samantha, we're right. not we've, we've already discussed we are not changing the road where it goes to your driveway and to Zach's driveway into a trail okay thank you okay Thank you. Well, the sense of the board was we're not proceeding any further with that unless somebody brings it back up. Um, but you want, so, Sarah, you want, you, you want a letter sent? Oh. Yes. 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 And I also want to have the mo have uh, movement made on turning the uh, rest of that road yep. into a trail. Okay. So. Moving right along here, you have a copy, and I have the copy right Thank in front you. of me, and oh. now I've misplaced it again. No, not the agenda. I have this, copies of that letter. This, this letter from our attorney talking about, uh, and this pertains to Wells Park. I didn't, I didn't hand it out, Peter, because I didn't know. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, so I, what I will do is have, have Sarah send this to all of you. No, 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 I've got it right here. I just didn't oh, okay. know since I needed your permission since it was for, uh, from a lawyer to you. Okay. There you go. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. All right, let's try it on top of it. So what this talks about is, is the ways to change the road at Welch Park into a town road. And... To me, his recommendation is, if you look down at paragraph one, two, three, four, 
I would suggest a dedication and acceptance approach that avoids at least some of the cumbersome steps of the statutory process. You can, you can all read that, but that makes good sense to me. And we need to start doing that. We have the, the wastewater permit has officially been transferred. So this is the last step before we can spike Welch Park. So, really, my report is you should read this over, and then we'll uh, we'll discuss it. But uh, the reason the reason we asked Sarah and I asked Rob to do this was so we were absolutely clear about the correct way to do it. Because you start reading through those statutes, and it's confusing. Mm -hmm. So, Peter, what happens with the insurances and things? They just all go away because there's no longer a well spark. Is that it? I'm sorry? Insurances and all of that, it just gone. all goes away. Gone. All the, all the individual landowners, including us, are going to take responsibility for our, our portion. stuff. So that, yeah. So, hallelujah, that all goes away. The one dangling participle in this, which I don't understand, and the state is just unbelievable, is I said, why does the town have to have a separate wastewater permit for that road? And they said it's because it has to be transferred to the town and then subsequently the town petitions the state to just include that because we have a wastewater permit for all our town roads. And short of that, I mean, isn't this just crazy? Short of that, they have a process where they will at least waive the charge for the permit. But it makes no sense for us to have a separate permit for that tiny little piece of rub with two ditches on either side of it. But anyway, we can we can jump through those hoops. It's basically writing letters and and doing stuff. But this but we do need to do this dedication and acceptance process. And I would recommend we start if, uh, I guess what we should do is have some time for you guys to read this over just so you get a good uh, I learn every every time. He's, he writes really good letters. When you read what he says, it makes sense. I mean, don't you agree, Sarah? It's really helpful, yes, because it's not, I'm just going, I'm, I'm not going to belabor this, but I'm just going to read section, the one line in the statute that says, this elect board may also initiate these proceedings on its own volition, okay? Yeah. Regarding, regarding upgrading or no. Say that again, please. The select board may also initiate these proceedings on its own volition. So in other words, whether you're going to upgrade or downgrade, the select board can start that process. Yeah. If the select board says, no, we're not interested, then 5% of the voters get right. together and say, we either want to upgrade or downgrade, then the select board must go through the process. Right. Correct. Yeah. yeah. That's the way I've always understood it. Why didn't we think of that? <laughs> So it sounds like we should put that on the, a future agenda. Yeah, next time I would say, because we need to, so, the quicker we can get this done, the better off we're going to be, and it's going to take some time. So should we start like the formal process? Yes. Yes, okay. Unless, unless you want us to wait. Do you want us to wait so everybody has a chance to go over this some more? I, truth be told, I'm not going to go over it anymore. Okay. I'm, I, I go ahead, go ahead with the dedication and acceptance. Pro the good news is, the expensive part of this was likely to be the survey, and we've got a survey. Right. You still have to do go through wait 30 days. Yeah. 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 Certified mail. Yes. Yeah. We. Yeah. Notifying me of butters. That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Continuing discussion about whether to proceed with a bond vote in 2024. Are we the town hall renovation action unlikely? Okay, so um, VIA is emailing me because they, you know, they're planning, right? They're planning for their next year and like their next quarters of what they need to do for work. And, um, and I, so, so the next step would be to do um, 
the design phase, which is the $40,000, $45,000 design phase. So just so you know, like what you saw, you know, for the pictures and all that, it's just like a layout, right? It's not the, it's not the design, right? And so, um, and the, the cost that they gave us is, you know, an estimate, right? It's, it's really... Um, Time and materials. Yeah, and it's, you know, plugging into a, you know, a software system and saying, okay, based on what we've done, this is, you know, in today's dollars, two million, whatever it was, two. And, and so I emailed her back and I said, well, you know, the board seemed to think that we didn't want to spend another $45,000 if the town was just going to turn it down, right? And it would be a waste of $45,000. Whereas Dave and Sandy, and I you know, really think Dave in particular understands these things quite well, he thinks it's quite important to do with the design study before you go to the bond because you get a much more accurate picture of what it is that you're actually going to be doing. I think, and you get, a, you get a more accurate cost. Um, now, we could, there's a couple things we could do. We could say, we could go to the town with a higher bond estimate than what we think we'd actually pay. Because that's like what, because you, you're not actually taking that money. You're just voting that you can go up to a certain amount Correct. of money. Now, you'll notice in Berlin, they voted down the bike path bond. When that bond was most likely not even going to come close to what they would actually borrow because they were counting on getting grants. And so there's a chance you're not going to get the grants, right? So you want to make sure that you have enough money to pay for it if you're going to actually do yeah, it. But, well, that's a, that's, I, under, I understand that line of thinking, but that is, that is tough, tough, tough to say to the voters is, you know, we hope... We hope we're going to get grants, so we're not going to need to spend this money, but we want the authority to spend the money just in case. Oh, hope's not a good strategy. Right, hope is not a good strategy, right. And so the, so, so the reason for spending the 45000 up front is because we will get a more accurate picture of what we're asking for, or we say, we ask for... That estimate was 1.5 million, wasn't it? Um, because we uh, the one that the, the that guy sent us, had a, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we could say, well, um, you know, if we do enough educating for the voters, we could say we could, you know, we could look for a bond up to two million, when and that we have, you know, scheduled to apply for these grants that would bring that potential cost down, without having, you know, a full picture of what this uh, this project may cost us. But I totally get like not wanting to spend $45,000 that is for nothing, right? Correct. Um, if the voters are going to vote against it. Um, Can't you ask like a non-binding question uh, and just poll the voters as to how they feel? Are they willing to spend up to X number of dollars for a town hall renovation? Well, that's, yeah, so, well, I'm because... Of town hall, a town uh, meeting. You're, be, you're yeah, about, act, yeah, not actually go for a bond vote or anything like that with a, you know, a number. Just say, look, we have preliminary design. It's been estimated. It's going to come in this. And just make it a non-binding, you know, vote just to see where people's thought process is. Um, and, then, and then spend the 45000 then And then, and then, and then if you goes, get a positive result 000. from that, go for the forty-five. Well, here's the problem with all that, is that the, is the funding, the, the time sensitivity of the funding, right? Because it, this scenario potentially puts it off by a whole year, right? And Or we have some special vote that I don't think is entirely fair to the town because that it relies on people to actually, like, show up. Um, and I'd rather it be a vote either at town meeting or in November, um, not like some random time in the year to get 100 people voting on the town hall. I don't want that to be the case. I want there to be as many voters as possible. Um, so, um, 
So, and the other thing too is, is that if you vote for it, it's not that we necessarily take the money out right then, right? It's more about like, getting the approval right. from the voters to spend up to, to get a bond for up to that amount. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that bond probably wouldn't happen before winter, the winter series of bonds. Um, and it would coincide closer to the MERP funding. And I mean, then the idea is finding people too, right? I mean, <laughs> finding someone to do the work, right? I mean, there's, there's a lot here. There's a lot to it. And, um, and so, I mean, I, I totally see it, the, the worry of spending 45000 of like ARPA money or whatever it is that we would find to spend on it and then having people say no. Um, but I don't want to, I don't want to wait. I don't want to, I, I would rather just go and do the bond vote and see if it passes. And if it doesn't, we go back to the drawing board or we just do MERP stuff. Right, and we say, okay, this, is, this, is, what, this yep. is what we're going to do. We're just going to do some MERP things and, and be done with it. By the way, I'll interrupt this broadcast to say it's warmer in here with these windows. I can really feel it, Sarah. Can you? Yeah, absolutely. I, I can totally feel. It Makes a huge difference. It we makes a huge that, we difference. We were saying that last, the last, the last right. meeting, and it wasn't anywhere near as cold right. as it is it out there tonight. It definitely makes a difference. So anyway, I, I guess, what do you guys think? Well, I know we can't vote on anything, but. What are your thoughts? So here's my, my comment, and I've thought about this a lot, is I was involved in, I believe, all of the school renovations, three of them. And we had real designs and, you know, estimates. They were definitely estimates, but real designs uh, before we went for the bond vote. <laughs> and we spent the money to do that. And Dave is like, we really need to do this. Like that is like that's usually the process is to be is to come with as as much information. Now the reality is, is it going to change someone's mind? Probably not. But what it does for us is it gives us a more realistic ask. What we don't want to do is ask for two million and find out it's actually three million, right? And then we're in deep doo doo. We have to come up with the next million. Hopefully it's not that It's far not going to be that much. I mean, come on. That's what we <laughs> hired them to do to give us a really yeah. a realistic number. Yeah. And so, I mean, that would be just crazy if they'd come back with that kind of difference. And um, there's things that you can't, you know, you could probably be like, okay, well, we're going to do the cheaper window alternative to the, the more expensive. Um, but you also are like, well, if you're going to do this, you want to do it right, right? I mean, you want to make it mm -hmm, the absolutely. building that we are in. We don't want to spend 1.5 million when we could spend two and get a building right. that is, you know, really that much so, more useful. I mean, they are dead set on the 45,000, right? I mean, there's no saying, can't we do it for 30,000? I don't Probably think not. so. I don't think so. Yes, yes sir. What would you think about putting a special article on the uh, town morning for the meeting for this cost? And that would give you a chance to start pitching to the town about the town hall renovation. That's what I was kind of saying. That's what you're saying, That's but that, that saying. puts us off to a bond vote for November. But I think, you know, this is a big sale. This is not some, this is huge. Right. I mean, the way MERP is going now, it's probably not out. I mean, MERP isn't even, we haven't even gotten our assessments yet. And you can't even do your application until you get your energy so assessment. So it's probably going to be extended. So it's going to be extended. It's really about MERP. It's not about me anxious to get no, this no, done. No, I understand that. What I'm trying to think of is I've already gotten some little bit of blowback in the town from people making little comments, you know. Right. Um, you've probably heard those comments, haven't you? I probably have. So, I think you got a. I think we got a big sales pitch to go. I mean, I just don't think. Okay. That's my. That's my sense. You guys are select board members. You live in town as well. My sense is like, ooh, there's already like, mm -hmm. and maybe people would also like to be able to weigh in on the design. I know you had a public hearing, but not many people came. If you had it at a, at a town meeting, people could say, well, wait a minute. 
there's not this, there's not that. Why do you know there's more chance for input? Yeah. Do you understand what I'm I mean saying? already I went to the meeting on Saturday for the um the yeah, food sorry, pantry and everyone was like, Why is it so small, our little food pantry? And I was like, Well, that can be changed, you know, if we really want to. So I I'm fine with that. Um, but are you saying it would be a discussion, not a vote? I would say that you would warn it as a special article just as you would warn Warn a special library. article for the forty five thousand. Should the town spend forty five thousand dollars to oh. design to pay for the design of uh, or, or detailed design to refine the design? Okay, but could it be works. a conversation instead of a vote? No, you would have it as with actions. No, so then like we'd have authority 16. from the voters to spend the forty five thousand. And then the voters would decide whether or not to allocate. Uh, uh, that's fine, but I guess my question is, can we have at somewhere in that town meeting a discussion yeah, about yeah, yeah. it? Yes. Of course, like you do. You've just forgotten, because it's been two years of no, t of no town meeting. Right. It hasn't right. been three. You can talk about anything three. you want. You well, I know, but I mean, it's not, it's usually not something that you talk about unless it's on well, a list. The reason for an in-person town meeting is to have yeah, those kinds right. of discussions. Susan well, Clark meet? stands up there, opens it up to the... No, I know, but if it's on the ballot... It's, it's not, not on the ballot. ballot. It's a floor vote. It's a special article. Okay, that's what I'm asking. I thought you said it was going to be on the ballot. Article. It would be on the like, board. How do we talk about it? Oh, okay, yeah. The only, right. the only thing that's going to be... It would be an article at the town meeting. All right. The only okay. thing that's going to be on the ballot is going to be officers. Yeah, unless okay. Unless the board decides to hold I'm sure if you're there, we will discuss it. Oh, stop that. <laughs> it's Our, annoying. Uh, okay, guys, it's 6.30. Okay. So we need to... Uh, well, we need to look at the rules. No, I've got I'm okay with that. I like that idea, Sarah. Okay. And and Dorinda. Um, I think that's good. So I had all the open. Yes, it is. So the, the applicants okay. you guys are going to over that round table over there. Oh, okay. Vic, is there only one thing in this to sign? So do we have one? Yeah, two. That is the first question two. we've got to answer. I think the uh, towards the end. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, I've got a cheat sheet for you. We have eight. We have a quorum of. Because you've got to have a quorum of the entire number. Wait, what's the total number? She can come down. She's good. She's good. Sarah, what's the total number? She looks sad. Okay, well, let's just review. So we have full select board. No, no, I think I've got. Oh, yeah. I have that. Maybe, maybe. We've got yeah, I've got it right here. Where'd you get it? I it the last oh, no, no, this also includes a tax bill. Oh, all right. Okay. I thought we had the tax bill. Maybe not. I don't know. All right. Maybe I'm going to Here, take it. I got so much paper around. Oh, Shelly's here. So I can see them out of here, right? So no, they don't have to. No, no, Anyone no. can be here. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. The public, this part of it's the public meeting. Okay. So I think we're okay with the quorum. I just want to just run through it. According to BLCT, quorum is the minimum number of members of the board must be present. The quorum, the quorum for the board of abatement is either the majority of the total number of the members of the board. So the total number of the members of the board is five select board members, five JPs, Of the members of the board or the treasurer, a majority of the listers, since we only got two, there's one. 
a majority of the select board members. I think we're good. Are we good? good. Uh, applicants, do you feel like we're good? Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah, we're good. good. All right. Do you remember how to run? I've got a, my rules right here. I'm I'm reading them. All right, good. Thank you for the rules. Um, so this is a hearing of Kyle Weaver and Renee Woodward at 15 Lower Sunnybrook Road in Middlesex, Vermont, and a request for abatement. Um, at this time, I need to ask the applicant and any other witnesses and the listers uh, to take the following oath. So are you all ready for this? Okay. Under the pains and penalties of perjury, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you give in the abatement hearing under consideration shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, for the applicant, do you have any questions about how this uh, hearing will proceed? And, okay, uh, next I need to ask uh, the Board of Abatement members to make any disclosures of conflicts of interest or if they need to recuse themselves. Not a 10, right? Okay, next, ask the applicant to identify the statutory abatement category under which the abatement request is being made and then present his or her testimony and other evidence followed by the testimony of any other witnesses on behalf of the petitioner. So on the, I thought I had it right here, I'm sorry, the back side of the application. Oh, you got a reason for abatement? Yes. Yeah, you have it, take it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Reasons for abatement, one through seven, you checked out the box, property was lost or destroyed. Is that, I presume that's accurate? To an extent, yeah. They spent okay, so, <laughs> so now you basically present your case. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've got, we're flooding. Uh, we've got two different estimates. Hello, we cannot hear this. Uh oh. Because I can't. Can you guys? Oh, actually, can you take that right there, John? That that um, microphone. Microphone is maybe right over here. Oh, that's that's for his. Oh, that's over that. That's for Orca. Where's our? Um, it's the owl. It's the, the owl that's, that's picking my. No, that's also Orca. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jan, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, Bridget, okay, okay, maybe just talk about it. Um, we got flooded back July 10th. Uh, sense of repairs, damages, got two different estimates uh, to get the house back the way it was. It averaged out to $110,000. Um, that's not including the debris that's on the yard, which is the neighborhood of 2,000 cubic yards, mud, mud, so on and so forth. Uh, the property has now been listed as high risk. Um, our tax assessment is just under 170. And I guess a simple way of thinking, we've got $110,000 worth of damages. Uh, actually, it's a lot more than that because we're talking probably thirty dollars to $50,000 worth of excavation work. Yeah, not to mention um, abatement to, we would have to, if we were to remain living there, we got it would be a, an additional $40,000 to to raise the house to a level that would satisfy any loan, Location. bank, et cetera. Um, so that's on top of the internal damage. We also got the, ta I think this is from the town, the substantial damage estimator that I got, which we were at, you know, which doesn't coincide with the, the estimates what we got, but it was like over 50% property damage. Um, total replace, I think here it's like 83,000 is without doing a lot of intensive assessment, I believe, um, on the town's part. Yeah, this is Kevin Thompson. Yeah, yep. I've got that sign here. We had a foot and a half of water in the living quarters, two, and a, two and a half foot in the garage. 
And I brought pictures because I did state you guys wanted pictures and all of that, and I would love to show you if you want to see. <laughs> sure, if you want to pass them. Yeah, that's fine. There's some other stuff. That's a 53 inch swimming pool. I took out the ones that weren't pertainable to the. So we got a lot of. I other, hope so. <laughs> the other footage of um, the surrounding property, but that's like. This is not just the. Obviously, you the. Want to pictures, John? Yeah, when they come around. Oh, yeah. Peter, are we allowed to ask questions, or is there a time for that There's later? For that. Yeah, there'll be time for okay, that. Thanks. Yeah. So, Bridget, we can't share these with you guys. At I least can. I don't think we can. There's no way we can, right? No. Did you uh, Hold apply it up. for a FEMA? <laughs> we did. We were denied. Um, I've applied three different times, and they're playing their for the buyout. No, no, no. This is, is that what you got? Yeah, for a buyout. Oh, for a yeah, buyout? So yes, 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 we did. We are still waiting to hear anything about in regards to that. We applied for a FEMA assistance as well and have been denied. So you received no money? We received like $2,000 for relocation to find a temporary housing when it all happened. That's it. Um, I think my most recent time to the FEMA um, Disaster Center in Barrie resubmitted stuff because there was some question about we did not have flood insurance but our mortgage our bank did and they were holding it up waiting on the bank the bank finally stated that it was not our flood insurance it was theirs but they now are they denied it because now it we haven't received any money we haven't received other than two thousand long story yeah. short yeah. and don't want any yeah we don't want to take any <clears throat> Peter, I think what you should do is you should divide this hearing of like the time when people can start asking questions. If, they, if those guys are done doing their presentation, then people can ask questions. Yeah. Sure. So you're not living there. We are. We are. Oh, you are living there now. We Move have uh, made it livable. We've got plywood floors and we don't really have walls and we've got we don't have cabinets. We just make, you know, we're What's living very rustically sorry. for the time being. Did you live there from the event of the flood straight through? Camp and trailer. We lived at camper in the driveway. And when did you move back in? Uh, September? Yeah, roughly. It was getting cold. <laughs> Way too it got cold. colder today. That's yeah. Yeah. Is your intention you. to um, you try to uh, live there you. or to? Through the winter, yeah. yeah. We don't really have a lot of other options, so. Yeah, we're going to live there through the winter, and we we don't have a furnace, but we have the wood stove going. Um, but we're going to live there until this whole process. Fancy deer camp right now. Do we have for water? We've got well water. The wells. Yeah, and I had the water tested, and we, we had to um, that treat bacteria that. Bacteria. Yeah, we had to treat all that, but yeah. it's good now. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay, and so have you like thought out in your heads, you know, we see what your full year tax bill is, like a request for a specific amount, or are you requesting an abatement in full, or have you not kind of? Uh, no, I haven't went that, that far. Okay. Um, yes, yeah. But I mean, it's, I guess, simple math, we're 80% of the assessment. Mm -hmm. Did you pay your first no. installment? No. Okay. No, we had brought this up in, oh, July. I think three, <laughs> when days, we got the tax three bill. days after we got the bill and said it was <laughs> going to be put off till November, so we figured we'd put the payment off till November. And <clears throat> being in the high risk zone now, um, I need to resell the property. And if it does, you know, we do take the buyout. It, the property is basically worthless. So I guess that being said, yeah, 100%. I mean, it's a place to live right now, but it's not much different than the people down here on the curb living in a tent. The septic system at the house is not operational. It's, uh, don't jinx it, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's working. Everything has gone wrong, so yeah, it's for, for right now. Yeah. It is. Any other questions, board members? Do you have children? Yep, Piper is right behind us. Right She's behind nine. You. Ah, there she is. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> I heard it, Piper. <laughs> so can, I, can I just ask about what funds you've received? You haven't received any money from FEMA, or you received just like two thousand dollars relocation assistance. The initial, that's it. Did we you get any flood insurance? 
Um, the bank had flood insurance on it. Which no. We, so no, we did not. The mortgage was paid off. What does that mean? The mortgage? That the, the we bank. had a mortgage insurance. No, we don't have flood insurance. We didn't get any money from FEMA. The bank come um, with the. Okay, I'm sorry. And how much? Understanding the mortgage part. So, so they, so because of the flood, your mortgage was paid off. Yes. Because they held flood insurance on the mortgage. Okay, and how much was your mortgage? Twenty-five grand. Do you have any mortgage now? No, we we own the deer camp. <laughs> <laughs> and how many how many weeks were you with outside outside of your home? Do you think? Um, July 10th to okay. about ten. Ten weeks. Okay. I guess the comment I would make about the mortgage situation is as much as that's not putting your cash in your pocket, as my accountant has told me many times, forgiveness of debt constitutes income or constitutes reimbursement in a sense. Yeah. Yeah, but you no nice. longer yeah. you know, you no longer have that debt. Yeah. But I, I believe it's irrelevant for what we're here for. Possibly, yeah. It's too different. Yeah, yeah. It's, no, yeah, no, 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 no. I, I, yeah. I don't disagree. It took us yeah. three months to explain that to FEMA. Yeah, is this the? F we have not received any federal funds. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Okay. Yeah. So, Got it. but is the reason that you didn't get something? Maybe this has nothing to do with today's conversation. But is the reason that you didn't get anything from FEMA because something happened in a previous flood and they nope. told you to get flood insurance? This, this house has never flooded. Since it was built, so you weren't in a flood. We were in a flood plain and had to have flood insurance. But the way the flood insurance works, you've only got to pay. You've only got to carry enough to cover your mortgage. But you didn't have that. The bank did. So the reason the whole thing is irrelevant. I mean, it's kind of. But I'm wondering if that's irrelevant. why FEMA no, didn't no, no. give you anything. I'll, I'll tell you why. It's because unfortunately, when I filled out the application of FEMA directly, I, I said they asked me if I had flood insurance, and I said yes even though we didn't, but I didn't want to like lie because I knew the bank did. I should never have done that. That's why. And so I've had to re, I've had to appeal and appeal, but they will deny you if you have a, a period in the wrong location. Yeah. They will deny no, there. It's, it's a no, really, it's people think it's so easy to get it's funds. It's not just flood insurance. Yeah. I mean, it's, the well, bank when they want, it. when they have to really pay it out. Yeah, like exactly. And another thing is if we were to get a loan through SBA, which is in cahoots with FEMA, they would tax on anything they gave us to the loan. Also, so we, that's so why we don't want to take any. We that would, 40 some thousand they claim they give you? Yeah, you don't. Put on your if you're loan. over that 40 grand, you'll end up paying it back. If you're under, you're great. You'll, and if you don't mess up. Really, and, if you're over the 40 yeah, grand? And you have to take out an SBA loan because, I mean, it's a great interest rate. And, you know, they're, I mean, that's what they do. They make you fill out the SBA loan with the FEMA application. I mean, they like force you. And of course, they want to throw all this money at you, but come to find out the last time it was at the disaster, the DRC, oh yeah, by the way, if you do get this and you take out an SBA loan, we're going to tack that on to the t at the end. And I was like, oh, okay. So that's so the 40000 isn't yeah. free? No. no. Only they if it's less than right. forty, Or if you turn down the SBA loan right. and you didn't Correct. take the loan. Right. Correct, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, cool. it's like a trap. It's, a, it's quite a... They don't tell you that. It's really bad. And... It's been a full, it was a full-time job for 10 weeks. Oh, I'm sure it was. Trying to navigate that. So it is what it is. Well, the thing from the bank, I keep saying it's irrelevant because if you don't have homeowner's insurance, they do the same thing. It's not just specifically flood insurance. Right. Even though you're required to have it, they right. send you a letter and say, if you don't have it, we're going to buy it for you. So that's well, as part of your escrow or anything like that? Are you yeah, they put it on escrow. Yeah, right? and you end up paying for right. it. But. Yeah. yeah, I think you just hit the nail on the head that if you don't carry the insurance, they'll purchase it for you. Yeah. You're paying you. premiums. Yeah. yeah. But they hold the yeah. insurance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And they, exactly. take, and they yes. take the money. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. All right. Quite a racket. <laughs> um, Went the wrong field. But if your house burned down, they only <laughs> they give you everything. They would? Well, no, uh, we have homeowners. Or would they only give you 25? Oh, you have homeowners. Yeah. yeah. So okay, I forgot you did. That's a whole different thing. Yeah. 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 But it's, it's comparable because if you yeah. didn't have homeowners insurance, they would send you a note and say, we're going to buy it for you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. okay. So, now what? Yeah, we're open for suggestions. Yes. Just, uh, well, hello. Yes.
Exactly how long were you not able to live in your house? 10 weeks. About 10 weeks. Okay. And we're in it and right now. That, it's, it's During that time, you were in a trailer. Camper in our driveway. Okay. Yeah. And right now, I mean, we, we took five 16-foot dump trailers to the dump uh, that we paid for of personal belongings, kitchen cabinets, appliances, yeah. flooring. It's awful. Floating floors do float. <laughs> So, right now we have plywood floors. Uh, I've re-insulated the outside walls and got sheetrock back up just because cold weather is here. Right. We don't have a furnace, we have a wood stove. Sorry you've had to deal with this. this Shall we? Do you have anything to what it is. add to this discussion? Shelly? Shelly, can you hear me? Oh, I can now. Yeah, uh, um, the only question right. I had, uh, do they have electricity back? And are there, ha has yeah. the water been tested? Do they have water? We tested the water uh, and it had a bacteria in it. We took care of that. We never lost. See, today I went powered out a bunch of stuff again. So you need to speak up, I'm sorry. It's, 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 it's working, yes. We do have electricity. There's some questions. I think we need somebody to come in and assess it, but yeah. Go is by your rights hope when to stay there? Hmm? Is your hope to stay there or you haven't gotten it? It all far? depends on the, the bio. Oh, right. And I mean, if, we're going to stay yeah. until we figure that out. Okay. But, yeah, that's However, kind of well, a loaded that's question. Take... Yeah. Now, one more thing. Um, I know I had talked to Kevin Thompson on, on some of the other properties. And because it's over 50%, you folks, if you had to try to rebuild, um, my understanding is there's a lot of work where you've got to have it above the ground, a certain footage so that it doesn't happen again. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. At three feet minimum, which we've gotten quotes yeah. and it's about $40,000. Yeah. Yep. Anything else, anyone? Applicants, board members, listers? Um, I, I guess I'd like to know about the property itself. Was there any damage to the the land? Yeah, we've got over 2,000 cubic feet of mud, muck, still on the property that everybody has just kind of ignored, to say the least. I actually got a call from the state yesterday with talking about coming in and helping with um, debris and the sort something I've got to call them back but at this point again it's we've got I don't want to spend money 1.7 1. 1. acres yeah uh, some spots are two and a half foot of silt the whole yard is covered if you averaged out a foot at 44,000 square feet and made it a foot deep it would be 44,000 cubic feet divided by 27 it's over 2,000 cubic feet Yards. Yards. Hmm? Yards. Yards. Yes. Okay, I was trying to figure that out. Thank you. <laughs> I was trying to make yeah. that add yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, I, the I, property I, is complete I, mud. Um, I, it's. I first said a few hundred, yeah. and somebody said, you better do some math. Yeah. Mm, 150 so. truckloads, basically, sitting there, roughly. How many yeah. yards? Uh, what, was the, what was the yard number again? 2,000. It's over 2,000, yeah. You divide that 27 yeah, and 14 yards. I think you're 14 yards. yards of dump truck, right? Somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Depends if DOT's out or not. Yeah. Is, does, is, does the abatement include the education piece or only the municipal? It's up to you. It's, it's up, up to, to us. us. It's up to us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Discuss later. Okay. Okay, so if there is nothing else, uh, we are going to go in to excuse, excuse the petitioners and witnesses, and we will go into deliberative okay. session, and we will let you know. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, really sorry, you guys. Yeah, appreciate it. We, we're just down the road. You drive by and look at it. <laughs> <laughs>